Welcome to the Royal Museum of Armed Forces and of Military History in Brussels. As it is a very evocative environment to consider IHL, we will return to the museum throughout the course. In the next two videos, we will address some foundational and somewhat philosophical questions concerning IHL. The first and fundamental question that IHL provokes is whether it is absurd to regulate warfare with law. In this respect, IHL involves a twofold paradox. The first paradox is that by regulating and humanizing war, such law would make it more acceptable and legitimate. In particular, this would run counter the outlawing of war and undermine the efforts made, made by international organizations such as the United Nations to prevent armed conflicts. Yet, this does not seem well founded. We may first object that it is not the role of IHL to limit or temper resort to war. Its aim is only to regulate war when it has broken in order to alleviate the suffering of victims of war. It seems fallacious to think that it may have any impact on the occurrence of wars. It cannot increase resort to wars, and conversely, its non-existence will not reduce such an unhappy phenomenon. The application of IHL does not imply that war is legal or that collective security mechanisms are themselves inefficient. It is based on the mere reality that wars still occur today and that it would be disastrous to leave such a phenomenon unregulated even when it occurs in violation of international law, when legal or political mechanisms for avoiding it have failed. The second apparent paradox is that IHL regulates battlefield situations, which seems to be the negation of the law. In other words, law and armed conflicts would be two incompatible terms. This is what is meant by the famous Latin formula attributed to Cicerone, inter armas silent leges, or in English, laws are silent among those who use weapons. However, this does not seem true either. War, even if it is one of the worst situations, is still a social reality which, like any other social reality, is subject to regulations and constraints may indeed be considered in relation to waging war. War is not an end in itself. It is a goal-oriented activity, so that measures of violence which exceed what is necessary for achieving this goal may be seen as superfluous and may therefore be prescribed. In addition, decisions regarding the operations conducted in war are increasingly taken by professionals, removed from the tumult of the battlefield. Moreover, belligerents have a common interest in limiting the scope of violence. In doing so, they protect their soldiers and civilians. They agree on not conducting unnecessary acts of violence, so they can avoid wasting resources and retaliations. They also increase the possibility of post-war reconciliations, as such reconciliations are easier when the hostilities were not unrestrained. 